right? It's pretty obvious, right? When 10, when you get, when n is equal to 10, this is going to be 5 plus 100, 5 plus 100, and then after that, it's always closer, right? Okay. Um, uh, let me go back to this one and say, let's go back to this one and say, past what time is a sub n always within um, epsilon of 5? Okay, so the number is now, uh, is now, is now the letter E. Okay. Okay. So now, the letter, the, the, I want, so first I said, I want you to be within a tenth, I want you to be within a hundredth, right? I want you to, right? I want you to be within, now I want you to be within epsilon, and I'm not going to tell you what epsilon is. Okay. Epsilon is just some abstract number. It's just an abstract number. Okay. So now it's your first, you know, it's just a step into, into abstraction. Okay. Think about it again for one minute and see if you can tell me the answer. The answer? Who can who can give the answer? Wang Chin Chang, how about you? You didn't get it. Okay. Uh, somebody else. I'm seeing you. So this thing is called epsilon. So one over epsilon. One over epsilon is right. One over epsilon is the answer, right? Because you say, well, look, you know, if uh, if I want, right? So look, a sub n minus five. We saw was one over n, right? We saw is one over n. The distance to five is one over n. So if n is bigger than one over epsilon, then one over n is smaller than epsilon. One over n is smaller than epsilon, right? So all I need to do is take n to be bigger than one one over epsilon, right? So you know, just like when I said, um, I want you to be small. I want got the the distance to be smaller than a tenth. The answer was ten, right? I want it to be smaller than one hundred. The answer was one hundred, right? If I had said smaller than a thousand, the answer would have been the answer the answer would have been time is one thousand, right? When epsilon is 1,000, the time is the time is 1,000, right? When epsilon is just epsilon, the time is one over epsilon. The time has to be past one over epsilon. Okay. Are people people getting this? You guys in the back? Uh, is it making sense? Is it making sense? Not really. Not really. Okay, good, good. Okay, thank you for letting me know. Okay. So. Um, so let me, let me see if I can say it again, right? So, um, right, we have this sequence, a sub n is five plus one over n, right? And you see that, that yeah, that's, that's uh, you see that as n gets bigger, this sequence goes to five, right? This sequence goes to five, right? You say, okay, well, what's the difference between the sequence and five? So difference between 
a sub n and phi. Well, the difference between a sub n and phi, I should say the distance, say, the distance, the distance between a and phi is da 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 da, 1 over n. Right? You work it out like we did over here, you get the answer is 1 over n. Right? So, right? Like, so, um, you know, so at time 10, the distance, be the distance between them is 1 tenth. Right? At time 11, the distance between them is 1 11th. At time 12, the distance between them is 1 12th, et cetera, et cetera. Right? And you see that the distance is shrinking. The distance is shrinking. OK. So if I say, um, past what time? Past what time um, are all a sub n within you know, one tenth of five, the answer would be past time ten, right? Is that is that clear? Is that clear? One one time, right? Past time ten, everybody is within a tenth of five, right? Because the next guy is eleventh, next guy is twelfth, thirteenth, etc. Close, get, they're just getting closer and closer, right? If I say, past what time are you guys within 100 of 5? What's the answer? Past time 100, right? Past time 100. Suppose I say past, I want, I want a time past which everybody is within 1,000th of 5. Well, what's the answer? Time 1,000, OK? Right? Suppose I say, I want everybody to be within epsilon of five. Okay, and I'm not telling you what epsilon is. Epsilon is just some small number. Or let me say it like this. What if I say, I want everybody to be within pi of five. What's the answer? Time what? Past time pi? Well, actually, that's a, that's a very bad, bad number. Um, let me see. I want everybody to be within one over pi of, of the answer. Of, of, of. Pa no, that would be past time pi, right? That would be past time pi, right? OK, so now I'm going to give you some, some number, which I, it's a, just some tiny number. What's the answer? Nope. So if I say, like, epsilon is. 1 over a billion, or a million, so I don't have to write too many zeros. It'll be time, past the time a million, right? So you see what the pattern is, right? The pattern is you take the reciprocal, you take the reciprocal, right? And so if epsilon is just some number that I don't tell you about, the answer is actually 1 over epsilon, right? 1 over epsilon, right? OK? And you can see that more mathematically, like this, right over here. Um, you see, well, look, um, a sub n minus 5 equals 5 plus 1 over n minus 5. That's the absolute value of 1 over n. That's just 1 over n. Okay, so the distance is 1 over n. So to ensure that 1 over n is less than epsilon, we need, oops. We need one over epsilon to be smaller than n. You see that, right? To make this happen, we need this to happen, right? If this happens, then that happens, right? You just multiply both sides by epsilon and divide by divide by um, right divide by n, right? Right. Certainly, if one over epsilon is smaller than n then um, 1 over 1 over epsilon is bigger than 1 over n, right? So that tells me that um, uh, in that case, uh, 1 over n is smaller than epsilon. Right? Okay. 
is it, is it making, making sense? Making sense? Okay, so now we'll do the second example. Okay, pass what n, here we said, you know, pass what n is a sub n always within 100 of 5, and the answer was um, n equals 10. Now we're going to ask um, always within epsilon of 5. Okay, so take one minute and figure out the time you need to be passed to ensure that these guys are all within epsilon of 5. Okay, talk to somebody nearby, say what your answer is. Okay, what's the answer? Somebody just, just shout it out. What's the answer? Time has to be? Square root of 1 over epsilon, right? Yeah, so n being square root of 1 over epsilon will do. <coughs> okay, as long as we pass that time, right? You say, why? Why? You know, it's sort of obvious, but you just say, well, look, a sub n minus 5 is this, you know, 1 over n squared, right? To ensure 1 over n squared is smaller than epsilon, we need 1 over epsilon to be smaller than n squared. Right? But that means that means that n has to be bigger than this 1 over the square root of epsilon. Okay. So, you know, so you see, see, you see how it is, right? If somebody wants us to be within epsilon of five, we can do it, right? We can find a place, we can find, there is a time past which everybody is within epsilon of, of five, okay? So this, this, now maybe I can give the, the actual definition and it'll maybe make some sense. Um, a sub n sequence, we say the limit of a sub n is L as n goes to infinity if uh, given any epsilon, there exists an n uh, such that um, for all and bigger than n, a sub n minus l is smaller than epsilon. Okay. Uh, in which case, say um, the sequence is convergent or converges to L I should say N converges to L okay. 
if the sequence, if there is no limit, we say the sequence diverges. Does this, does this definition make sense, I hope? Like, like given, any, given any epsilon, we say the limit's L. If, given any epsilon, we can find, an, we can find a time past which um, everybody is within epsilon of the limit. Right? We, we saw we could do it in these, in these examples. That's basically, that's basically the idea. Right? We, you know, if I said, I want everybody to stay within a hundredth of L. We found a place where it happens, right? I want everybody to stay within a thousandth of five. We found a place where it happens, right? And we could do that for any, any um, small number, right? If you can do that, we say that the limit is actually L. So if there's no limit, we say the sequence diverges. So for example, right, negative one to the N, a sub n is negative one to the n. Right? This thing has has no limit. This thing uh, diverges. Right? If you look at the picture, negative one, one, right? Negative one, one, negative one. Negative one, one, 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 right? Right. What's the what's the problem with the sequence? If I say, find me a time. Wait, hold on. So, how come the sequence diverges? If I say, I'd like a time, uh, so I'm going to say, I think the limit is 1, right? So find me a time past which everyone is within 1 half of 1. Okay. I'd like everybody to, to find me a time past which everybody is within a half of 1. Can you do it? No, it's impossible, right? Okay. No matter what time you choose, right? You choose some time, you say, uh, how about this time? I'd say, well, that's, that doesn't work, right? Because look, they're these guys, and they are two distance two away, right? These guys are distance two away from the limit. It didn't work. Find me another one, right? But no matter what time you choose, it's never going to work, right? OK. Yeah. So if I take epsilon to be like one or you know, even like one and a half, it still doesn't work. Right. For epsilon equals one, there is no there is no time that works. There's no time that works. Right. So failure. No limit. Or at least one is not the limit. One is not the limit. Right. Similarly, negative one is also not going to be the limit. Right? And those are basically your only two possibilities. So you see that there, no, there is no limit. Okay. So divergent, divergent sequence, right? We weren't able to play the game for epsilon equals one. With the other, with the other examples, we could play the game, we could find an answer for any epsilon, right? But here, there's this epsilon. In fact, there's a whole lot of epsilons that don't work. Right? Any any epsilon less than less than two, you'll run into trouble. Okay. Okay. So just to give you some sense of, of what it means to, to be a limit. Okay. What it means to be a limit. Oh, I should give you a harder example. Can I have a harder example? 
here's a here's a good example. This is this is one. Um, so uh, last example. The limit of two roots of n over square root of n plus one is actually two as n goes to infinity. Okay. So and again, I ask the question: um, Given epsilon, what past what time? So given some number epsilon, positive number epsilon, past what n? Uh, uh, are all a sub n within? Epsilon of two. Okay. okay. Take take one minute and see if you can figure it out. Okay, turn to somebody nearby and talk to them. Say what you got. Anybody, anybody get something? Anybody figure it out? Again, what we need to do is look at, um, you know, look at the distance between a sub n and two. Okay, 
So let's look at the distance between a sub n and 2. Right? Well, that's 2 root n over root n plus 1 uh, minus 2. Right? That's the same thing as 2 root n uh, minus 2 root n uh, minus 2 over root n plus 1. Right? That is uh, this over root n plus 1. Right. Okay. So, um, yeah. Maybe make it a little bit simpler. I'm going to write it like this. That's smaller than two over root n, right? Because if you divide by something smaller, the thing gets bigger. Okay. So to ensure. Um, to make uh, a n minus 2 smaller than epsilon, it suffices to make uh, 2 over root n smaller than epsilon. Right? In other words, uh, 2 over epsilon, we want to be smaller than root n, so n has to be C four over epsilon. <laughs> right? That'll that'll do it. If n exceeds four over epsilon squared, then that'll work. Okay, detail. Can we use the two over the square root of n? Yeah, I think it'll be a trickier if we do that. Maybe. Let's see. So let's see. So you take 2 over root n plus 1. We want that to be smaller than epsilon. Well, that would mean that 2 over epsilon is less than root n plus 1. Right? Then epsilon Yeah, it'll work. It'll work. 2 over epsilon uh, minus 1 is less than root n. Right? So it'll work as long as your epsilon is, is, is small enough. Like, um, right, as long as your epsilon is small enough. If your epsilon is, is very big, then this, you will run into some trouble because you end up with the square root of some negative number. Okay. So as long as, as long as, oh wait, wait, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it's okay. Still square it. Well, you don't want this number to be negative, right? So you don't, as long So right now what we have is that um, uh, uh, So as long as as long as 2 epsilon minus 1 is bigger than 0, right? 2 epsilon is bigger than 1, so epsilon is smaller than 2. <laughs> right? As long as epsilon is smaller than 2, then it, it's OK. So then you would square both sides and say, as long as n is bigger than 2 over epsilon minus 1 quantity squared. Okay. Yeah, for epsilon is smaller than 2. And actually, that's that's the better answer. Right? This is better than this is a this is a finer answer than that answer. It's more more precise than that. Answer. The, the reason I the reason I wanted um, this thing to be this thing to be positive, right, is because at this point we square both sides. So we say a is smaller than b, so then a squared is smaller than b squared, right? 
But is that always true? No, right? You have to have positive numbers for this to be true, right? If you have some like negative four and one, right? Certainly, negative four is less than one, but negative four squared is not less than one squared, right? So I wanted to be careful. That's that's why I'm saying you, know, you want this this number on the left to be positive. Otherwise, you can't just square both sides and say that it's still OK. That's, that's, why I, that's why I went this way, to avoid this long explanation. But it's true. That's a better answer. OK. 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 OK, so I hope you're getting the idea, right? What does it mean for the limit, for this thing to be the limit? It means that somebody gives you an epsilon, and you can find a time past which all all your all the past which all elements of your sequence are within that tiny number of the thing that is the limit. Uh, what what time is it? Eleven fifty-five. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, take a break. Yeah, take a break.